Since my last video on the basics of photo editing, I've been receiving some questions about camera profiles. So today I wanted to take some time to explain camera profiles and kind of explore why you should be looking at different profiles and what to expect. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer and take a look. All right, so here we are inside of Luminar Neo and I'm going to kind of walk you through using camera profiles with a, uh, what is this? This is a architectural picture with a very gray sky. It was super overcast while I was at Imaging USA. It even rained a bunch and I was walking. I seen this little thing on the roof and I said, you know, I'm just gonna photograph it for fun just completely for fun. But this is a perfect example of why you want to look at camera profiles because when you use a raw image, it's flat. However, if you click on camera profile, and I'm just gonna minimize everything else to make it easier for me to uh, kinda go through this. But the Luminar default, it doesn't look terrible, but eh, you know, we could do better, I think. So. Here, I have a few different options, right? I have Adobe Standard, which that is the one that you get out of Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, uh, or at least an emulation of that. And it just changes the colors a little bit. So if I hover off of this, you can see it doesn't do much and it's not like overly crazy, but the shadows open up just a little bit more. So then we have Camera Version 2, and or a camera vivid 2 i think that's what it is camera vivid version 2 whatever uh, we'll call it the camera vv2 all right now this one is a much brighter exposure of the 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 rendering of the raw image all right this is much brighter and then this one is a little bit darker so when you photograph your images you have to ask yourself did this photograph bright enough or is it darker than what I expected? That's when you can come to these camera profiles and see which one gets you close to where you want the end state of your image to be, or at least gives you a good starting point for the exposure and the colors in your image. Because if I come down to camera black and white, guess what? It's going to be a black and white image and that's going to change the colors. Then we have camera NT, and I wouldn't really worry about the names. I know I'm rattling off all of these names. The names aren't as important. What's important is what does it do to your image, all right? So if you look at the NT, uh, camera NT, and then if I come up here to the camera VV2, you can see that this one is much brighter than the camera NT. In fact, I feel like the camera NT is the same as the Adobe, just a little bit brighter, all right? So I probably wouldn't care to use that one either. Then you have camera FL. This one is much, much brighter, and it also desaturates the colors a little bit, makes them less punchy or vibrant, in my opinion. Then we have PT and camera PT, and I think that stands for portrait, but it doesn't matter. Don't Again, don't worry about the names. In fact, you may have different names in your program of choice, right? Uh, in Luminar Neo, this is what I have. And then we have Camera SH, which much brighter, more desaturated colors. Uh, if you look at the red here in the building, we'll call that red. I don't know what color it really is. Uh, if I hover over Camera SH, you can see that turns to a more orange because it brightened up that red hue, okay? So then with camera standard, I guess is what this is, I don't know, uh, I'm just guessing, that's what ST stands for. You can see the camera ST, it brightens up the overall image and it even adds a little bit of saturation. Uh, it's a very small amount but there is saturation being added to the overall image. Then we have camera IN and it's essentially doing the same, right? So the one that I think works the best for me 
is the camera vv2 that seems to work the best and i'm not going to go into loading a custom dcp uh, but just know that you can go and download uh, i think these stand for digital cinema profile i should probably know that but i don't so my bad if anyone knows drop it in the comment section below uh, i'm sure you can answer that question with a quick google search but i digress uh, what i'm going to do is go ahead and click on camera vv2 now this is where we started this is where we are and I love doing before and afters whenever I select something inside of a photo editing application. Now, what we can do, we'll go ahead and close our camera profile since we've selected the base color palette that we want to start working with and modifying. Now, I got to come into my light section or my tone and color um, or my exposure section. It just depends on what your software calls it inside of Luminar, it's called light. So what I could do is I could say, okay, what do I want to modify here first? And I think I need to modify some of the contrast. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up on the contrast a touch here, and that's gonna bring back some richness to the overall image. Now inside of Luminar, it uses something known as smart contrast, and I'll be lying to you if I told you I knew the algorithmic patterns that it's using, uh, but just know that it does work a little bit differently than a typical contrast slider. So be careful with your software. If you decide to pull up on this contrast slider, just know that it may not be the one that you want, all right? Or you may not wanna push it as hard as I did uh, with that being pushed to 33. Now, I don't know if there's much information in the shadows that I care about, but if I open up the shadows, I'll take a look and see. Uh, yeah, I'm not really getting anything that I care to get, so I'll pull that back down. I think the shadows were pretty decently exposed. I'll open them just a little bit to provide like some, uh, some airiness or some uh, some openness to the image. I don't even know if that's the best way of describing it, but that's how I'm gonna describe it, All right? So the next thing that I would probably do in this image is modify the overall colors, all right? And that's going to be in the color section here inside of Luminar Neo. And you already know my favorite, if you don't know, let me tell you, my favorite slider when modifying color globally which means over the entire image, I just push up on the vibrance. Uh, there's something about just cranking the vibrance and it's more forgiving than saturation, all right? If I push up on saturation, that just looks like a hot mess of color, hodgepodge, and that could be what you're going for, but usually it is not what I go for. So what I like to do is leave my saturation uh, pushed relatively low. I don't really crank the saturation crazy high unless I'm going for a very specific look that I know that I want. Uh, but the vibrance, on the other hand, I will push that probably uh, sometimes all the way to the max, depending on what I'm getting out of the overall image. So here's what we came into Luminar Neo with out of the raw image. And here's what we have so far. And I think that this is working. Now, I am starting to see some weird discoloration over here on these little uh, wire mesh things. And that's something I would probably deal with in a local adjustment. But I'm not gonna do that for this particular video because I really just wanted to focus on getting the color of the entire image as well as the exposure set but starting with a camera profile so you can see how that plays into an edit. Now, some people are probably gonna be like, well, Chris, you didn't talk about the white point and the black point, and you didn't even show a histogram. So like, what does that even mean? Well, in some applications, you don't have access to a histogram. And I know that there is a histogram in Luminar Neo, let me see. Uh, view, 
show histogram. There we go. So the histogram's here, and I have access to the little blinking, uh, or not blinking lights, to see if I'm overexposing. So if I come back to this module here, because it's just a requirement of Luminar to keep working on the raw version of the image. Uh, if I push up on my exposure here, you can see that I get those red clipping indicators. And then if I pull it all the way down, I should get some blue, but I guess Luminar doesn't see any issues with that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reset that. Now, what I am noticing in this particular image is that I am losing some detail here in the lights. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull down on my highlights and that's not correcting that issue. Oh, you know what? I know why the blue didn't show up because I didn't have it turned on. You gotta turn these things on uh, if you wanna use them. It's crazy how that works, but you gotta turn it on if you wanna use it. I don't know what that was about, but it was beautiful. Uh, so now that it's turned on, I can see these blue indicators, but right here inside of the uh, garage area, because I think that's what this is, parking, uh, parking garage, it's not very good. So I'm gonna pull down on my whites, but I think I may have just lost that information when this photo was captured because even pulling down on the exposure, uh, not so good. But like I've shown you in the past, you could use a local adjustment to correct those. So that's how camera profile and your exposure controls work together so you can create a good balance to start with editing your image. Now, one of the things that I wanna do with this particular image is click on the sky adjustment and I wanna change the sky. So uh, let me just find a sky that would probably look relatively decent in this, this, uh, this photo. This one looks more overcast of what the day was like. So it's going to match more with the overall image. And it does look a little bright down here relative to what I was experiencing. So maybe we'll go with a different one. And I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time with the sky replacement there. That's, that's actually way more accurate. But you can see that I'm losing some of the information in the highlights here. So what I can do now, I'll go ahead and close the sky enhance. Um, actually, let me see if Luminar has this built in because sometimes, no, yeah, so brightness. I can just pull down on the brightness for the sky, bam. And those indicators go away. So it's good to have those indicators on so you can see what you need to fix as far as exposure goes. But in relationship to putting a camera profile onto your image, getting a good base canvas, and then coming into the editing phase, which I went ahead and made this edit, that's how I would personally go about creating an image inside of a photo editing app. And hopefully that solves the questions about why should I change my camera profile or what does the camera profile even do to my image. If you found value in the video, smash that like button. If you're new here, consider subscribing. My name is Chris. I create photo editing content in multiple softwares, mostly on One Photo Raw, right here on this channel. I'd love to have you as part of the community if that is something you are interested in. So with that being said, until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.